live from case at 12 the night beat starts right now get ready it is going to be a cold night here in san antonio with temps expected to hit freezing for the first time in town early next morning we are ready mia montgomery keeping an eye on those falling temperatures for us tonight yeah, they're coming down fast. They sure are. And yeah, you can expect a very cold start to our Monday. Definitely going to want to make sure those kiddos are bundled up as they're headed out the door. You too, make sure you have got the coat because temperatures right now in the 40s here in San Antonio already in the 30s in some locations outside of the Alamo City. We've got clear skies, calm winds and dry air in place. That is a recipe for tumbling temperatures through the overnight. So we are expecting many locations to drop two or just slightly below that freezing threshold 32 degree mark just before the sun comes up tomorrow morning. So if you haven't done so already, one final reminder, bring in the pets, make sure they have a warm place to sleep tonight, as well as the potted plants. Hopefully any other sensitive vegetation is covered up. And yes, you are going to want the extra layers first thing tomorrow morning. After that, your Monday is going to be a beautiful day with low humidity, but we'll see a bit more moisture move in by the middle of the week and also some slightly promising rain chances throughout the second half of the work week's time frame. We're going to get you a look at that setup, talk a little bit more in depth about it coming up a little bit later on, guys. All right, we'll see you then. Damage is widespread after a devastating apartment fire this morning over on the north side. Investigators are still trying to figure out what happened at this complex, but that's not the only fire the San Antonio Fire Department worked today. Yeah, the night team's Avery Everett joins us now live after speaking with the fire chief who says the weather had a role to play, Avery. Well, Fire Station 4 probably seems pretty steady right now, but only after a busy day of back to back calls. KSAT 12 crews covered five different fires across the city today alone, and neighbors in these communities are searching for answers as to what happened. But SAFD says the weather could play a part in that. The entire thing was gone. Even with the flames out, we got home. Neighbors on the north side say it will be hard to forget this apartment fire on Thousand Oaks Drive. It's crazy. It was directly next door. Like, uh, we're right next to it. So this is pretty, it's pretty mind blowing. 10 units in the Sunset Canyon apartments destroyed overnight due to a heavy fire. On Sunday, one person being treated for severe burns and several others displaced. This complex now searching for answers. I can only imagine what it's like to be the people that right were inside. Now we're reporting no other injuries to any occupants. No one's and San Antonio Fire Department Chief no Charles Hood fire. says the cause is still under investigation. But preliminarily, it looks like it's a cooking fire that caused this. This was just the start of a busy day for SAFD. They continued to four other fires across the city. A store on the northwest side, a home on the west side, a commercial building just north of downtown, and another home on the southwest side. It grew rather quickly. SAFD saying the dry air and strong winds played a role, and they're warning people across San Antonio to be careful. All the discarded uh, cigarette butts, kind of embers left in the barbecue pit, have become more susceptible to being pushed across and become the, the ignition source. Neighbors say after a long day, it was very scary for me. There's nothing ever going on in this neighborhood, so it was definitely a shock. They're staying on high alert. Anything can happen. Anything could go wrong. With the end of the year quickly approaching, SAFD says now's a good time to check your smoke detector. If you need a free smoke alarm, we have resources on KSAT.com. Reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. Well, five days ago, a Texas mother found her 16-year-old daughter dead inside their apartment. Now her alleged killer is behind bars. This morning, the Edna Police Department announced they arrested 23-year-old Rafael Romero last night and charged him with capital murder in the death of Lisbeth Medina. Edna Police and the Texas Rangers found Romero about an hour north of the crime scene in Schulenburg. DPS records show Romero was born in Mexico, but the circumstances of the killing and how investigators tracked him down, still unknown. Meanwhile, Medina's family, loved ones in the entire Edna community still reeling in shock over this tragedy just weeks before the holidays. Lisbeth's mother says she was a cheerleader at her high school and that she loved and cared for everyone she met. Looking ahead to tomorrow, former President Donald Trump will not take the stand to defend himself at his own civil fraud trial in New York. The former president had been expected to testify in his own defense after prosecutors questioned him last month. 
He posted his plans on Truth Social account earlier today. Trump, the Trump Organization executives, and the former president's two adult sons are all accused in a decades-long scheme of inflating Trump's net worth to get favorable loan terms. New York's Attorney General Letitia James is seeking $250 million in damages and wants to bar Trump from doing any more business in the Empire State. Trump, meanwhile, has long denied any wrongdoing. And just a few hours south of New York City, the Justice Department announcing Trump's election interference trial should proceed as scheduled. Trump attorneys filing a motion last week to delay the start of that trial after the judge overseeing it ruled Trump is not immune from prosecution. Trump lawyers then appealed that ruling and claimed the election interference case should not move forward until that appeal is heard. Today, the DOJ filed its own motion stating only issues related to the appeal should be paused and the court can move forward. That case will now start on March 4th. And a San Antonio Park police officer shot and killed a man after investigators say the man tried to grab a different officer's gun during a struggle. This happening on the city's west side in the 3400 block of Buena Vista. Chief William McManus says the two officers involved called there for a disturbance between a couple. The man took off from the scene and when an officer caught up with him, the two got into a struggle. McManus says a second officer tried to use a stun gun when he got there, but that failed. And that's when the first officer announced the man was trying to get his gun. The second officer then shooting that man. The man who died was in his late 20s and apparently had four outstanding warrants, including one for trying to take another police officer's gun in a separate incident. Neither of the two officers involved in this incident today were hurt in that incident. A man and a woman were taken to a hospital after a bar fight ends in gunfire. This happening in the 7200 block of Wurzbach Road around 2 a.m. this morning. That's when officers say a woman in her late 30s was shot four times by a male suspect and then another man was pistol whipped by the alleged shooter. The woman telling police at the hospital it all started after she got into an argument with a woman inside the bar, which then spilled out into the parking lot. The suspect had long taken off by the time officers arrived there. And a 27 year old man rushed to the hospital with life threatening injuries after he was involved in a road rage shooting. This happened on the Highway 151 access road near Hunt Lane on the far west side of town around 830. That man told police he cut off a red Dodge Charger and someone inside that Charger shot at him. He was hit in the torso but managed to drive off and find help in a restaurant parking lot. SAPD used its helicopter to search for the shooter's car. But so far, no luck. If you have any information, call San Antonio Police. Now to Gaza, the Israel Defense Force and Hamas still fighting as the IDF pushes deeper into the Gaza Strip. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency saying at least 90% of the population there has been displaced since the war began. ABC's Inez de la Kutara is in Israel and explains why the U.S. may have vetoed a ceasefire as the humanitarian crisis there grows. Israel pressing ahead with its offensive, moving deeper inside Gaza. New video shows IDF troops in close combat with Hamas militants. You can see rows and rows of military vehicles here just a few miles from the border with Gaza as different units continue rotating in and out of the Gaza Strip. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday said dozens of Hamas terrorists have surrendered. He says the war is in full swing, but this is the beginning of the end for Hamas. I think part of what we see, the firepower and what we're seeing from their side, is because they're desperate and they understand they're losing and uh, we're closing in them. Israel is facing growing international calls for a ceasefire as the death toll in Gaza has climbed to more than 17 and a half thousand, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, a UN resolution for a ceasefire vetoed by the United States on Friday. With Hamas still alive, still intact, with the stated intent of repeating October 7th again and again and again, that would simply perpetuate the problem. Uh, and so our focus is on trying to make sure that civilians are protected to the maximum extent possible. Some of the youngest victims of this war, Gaza's children. <laughs> this nine-month-old baby's leg partially amputated following a blast in Deir al-Bala. And this girl's parents say she has cerebral palsy. She was rescued after being trapped under the rubble of their home. UNICEF reports close to a million children in Gaza have been displaced since the war began. In Azdalekotera, ABC News, Tel Aviv.
Next on the night beat, a local car repair shop with a questionable history. KSAT investigates the multiple allegations from customers of gross overpayment with little to show for it. Plus, a new reading program for students at McCollum High School is about much more than flipping through the pages. We'll explain how. And going to a doctor's appointment can bring out the anxious side in all of us. But a program with a proven success of calming nerves is now available for psychiatry patients at UT Health San Antonio. And we get a first-hand look at it next. And just one last reminder before we head to break, road closures on Loop 1604 near I-10 will still be active for at least a few more hours. Tech stop plan to wrap up around 5 tomorrow morning. So if you plan on driving in that area between now and then and you want to learn more, just head to our website for a complete breakdown of what areas are closed down. Taking the edge off doctor's appointment anxiety with four-legged friends. A local study last year took these sweet therapy dogs to a dialysis center where they found huge success with patients showing up to their appointments. And now they're offering that program to UT Health San Antonio psychiatry patients. I saw it firsthand and it's a hit. She does these little tippy taps with her back legs when she really wants to hang out with somebody. <laughs> Patient Isaac Hart can confirm these are not typically the sounds you hear or the feelings you see coming from a doctor's office waiting room. Yeah. What was your reaction when you came in and saw that? Oh, it was excitement. <laughs> Just pure joy. These healing hounds roam the waiting room at UT Health San Antonio's Behavioral Health and Wellness Center, making new friends by the second. Not. The program started with just three dogs, but now that all of the clinics are combined into one building, there's more patients and more demand. So now we're up to 11 dogs, including Bishop right here. I see a psychologist here. Um, they prescribe you know, med medications for depression. Hart says the dogs break down a patient's discomfort or embarrassment caused by mental health stigma. It can be intimidating, it can be scary, any number of things coming to get treatment. We first met Dr. Meredith Strensland last year when she brought these pups to a dialysis center as part of a research study to see if it could cut down on no-shows and therapy adherence almost cut their likelihood of missing appointment by about 70 percent. And while these patients aren't involved in research, Strensland can easily see similar results. A psychiatrist told her a new patient this week almost walked out on their appointment. It's having a dog here um, that calmed them, let them, you know, stick in there and, and stay around long enough to actually have their appointment. And, and it's not just the patients benefiting. So beautiful. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh. Genevieve Lara is a patient access specialist at the clinic and always makes time to sneak in some puppy cuddles. Animals are very therapeutic and they just bring out the joy in everyone. In a demanding healthcare field, mental health is crucial for both patients and staff. <laughs> just a big teddy bear. These furry friends and their volunteer handlers plan to keep coming back for those mood boosting hugs. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Some good dogs there. Al Zafar Shriners hosting a Christmas party today for kids and their families. It's for more than 100 years. The nonprofit organization now has supported the Shriners Hospital and Children and Burn Center. And today at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium, they had food, drinks, and games for kids to enjoy, as well as a special appearance by Santa and Mrs. Claus. You know, serving the community is really family. Ultimately, the bottom line is helping the kids and helping the kids with, at the hospital. Shriners Hospital for Children helps kids and families with health issues free of charge. The only thing missing there were some therapy dogs. I oh, I know. I want to I want to bring those to KSAT every single day. <laughs> All right. Now to our KSAT community event. There's just two days left to donate a pair of new shoes or socks to the Share the Shoes campaign. You can drop off those donations at any of the seven SAPD substations between now and Tuesday. They need shoes and socks for toddlers all the way up to adult sizes. We have all of this information on KSAT.com.
definitely won't want to be sending anybody out in flip-flops tomorrow morning. You <laughs> no. need the shoes and socks and everything else to bundle up because it's going to be chilly out there. It is going to be a very cold start. Yes, a brief light freeze expected potentially here in San Antonio for the first time this season. Up into the hill country and even if you localize spots west of the Alamo City have already seen their first freeze of the season, but we are expecting temperatures to fall into the low 30s and in around the Alamo City just before the sun comes up tomorrow morning, possible even a few upper 20s as you get into the higher elevations across portions of the hill country, Kerrville comfort stretching over to Bandera. So make sure once again, all of that sensitive vegetation is wrapped. We have the potted plants inside as well as the pets, giving your furry friends a very warm place to sleep because it is going to be a much colder than average start to the day first thing tomorrow. After that, though, overnight lows are going to trend up just a bit. In fact, Tuesday, we're closer to average in the low 40s. And then as we start to see a bit more moisture work back into south central Texas, those morning lows come up into the 50s by Wednesday, Thursday and into Friday. So after tomorrow morning, we're not really expecting any more potential freezes throughout the rest of the upcoming work week. So it will be a cold start, but after after the sun comes up tomorrow, temperatures are going to respond by warming pretty efficiently. It's going to be a beautiful day after that, thanks to the low humidity in place. Plenty of sunshine by lunchtime. We're just shy of the 60 degree mark. We've got forecast highs pointed in the mid 60s here in town, right around 65 officially here in San Antonio, 66 in Floresville, as well as Pleasanton, 64 in Divine, Rio Medina, 62 up to our northwest in Kerrville to wrap up the first day of the work week. We mentioned that drier air still in place tomorrow, making it pretty pleasant out there. We are going to start to see a bit more moisture stream back in, though, by Tuesday, Wednesday and into Thursday. You can see how those overnight lows respond. Still chilly first thing Tuesday. Also more cloud cover starting to work back into the area. Temperatures in the upper 60s. We should stay dry on Tuesday, but notice by the middle of the week and even into the back half of the week, a few rain chances are going to return. So let's talk about that setup here over the next several days. Later in the day tomorrow, I do think a few high clouds will be possible moving in from the south. By Tuesday, though, we then look off to the west where an area of low pressure is going to approach the Four Corners region. This low pressure system is going to work its way farther south by Wednesday. We've got a scattered potential to find a few showers maybe an isolated rumble of thunder there. It's pretty isolated into Thursday, but then depending on where exactly this low pressure system tracks, that's going to determine our rain chance by Friday, potentially scattered to even widespread just ahead of the weekend. So right now we're going to call it about a 40% potential on Wednesday, a 30% chance on Thursday, and then slightly better on Friday before we start to dry things out into next weekend as well. Again, potential rain rainfall totals and amounts for us here in South Central Texas. That is ultimately going to depend on where exactly that low pressure system moves across the state. But as of right now, it's looking like we could tap into an inch, maybe even two in spots before all is said and done. So that's something to check back in on here in the days ahead as we fine tune those details. Until then, Calm winds, clear skies, dry air, temperatures are falling. 42 degrees right now here in San Antonio. Bernie and Comfort have already hit the freezing mark. I doubt that their temperatures fluctuate too much through the overnight, but they could trend downward by a few degrees before the sun comes up tomorrow. So yes, plan for that light freeze just before sunrise into our Monday. Then we'll see a beautiful afternoon, mid 60s, slightly warmer into Tuesday. Tuesday before we start to monitor those rain and storm chances moving back in. Also could get a little breezy Wednesday and Thursday. If you notice the wind earlier this morning, we're going to talk about those peak wind gusts, what we actually saw here in South Central Texas overnight in the next half hour, guys. I think to prep Tim for moving back to Ohio, we <laughs> send him out in flip flops. Oh, that's a good like idea. a training. Hey, the, the weather this morning and today, that's like springtime temperatures. That's bust out the shorts. <laughs> Let's play Eye of the Tiger and make him like run around. <laughs> I am so here for it. I'm ready for winter. Bring it on. <laughs>
All right, Larry Ramirez will join us with a preview of Instant Replay right after this. The Houston Texans have been one of the surprise teams in the NFL this season with seven wins to date, but now they are dealing with a bunch of injuries. For a preview of what's on Instant Replay, here's Larry Ramirez. I'll tell you what, that aggressive Jets defense really got after the Texans today. So after winning three straight games, the Texans have now lost two of their last three and their starting quarterback coming up tonight on Instant Replay. No Tank Dell, no Nico Collins, no Collins. Dalton Schultz. Nope. Those are all big targets of his. And now the quarterback. CJ Stroud, that's... You don't like to see it. No, you don't. Texans rookie quarterback CJ Stroud is currently in concussion protocol after suffering a head injury during the fourth quarter of today's loss to the Jets. And leading receiver Nico Collins left the game early as well with an injury. Head coach D'Amico Ryan certainly has a lot to deal with. Well, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's your goal every year, and you know sometimes they come in bunches like it did for us for there for a while. Sometimes we've been thwarted by the state champions, but a little bit earlier in the playoffs. And uh, I'll be proud to get on that bus and take them boys north. Smithson Valley is the last San Antonio area high school football team playing. They won their semifinal matchup Friday night, 49-21, and will next play for a state championship against a monster of a foe. The Rangers are back in the state final for the first time since 2004. <laughs> It's called Silent Night. That is until Taylor University men's basketball hits a certain amount of points. Then the home fans go absolutely crazy. Mary Rominger will have more on the Trojans' awesome tradition. Plus, we go one-on-one -on -one with UTSA Athletics Director Lisa Campos. 210 Bam is ready to get back in the ring after breaking his jaw in his last fight. That and much more tonight on Instant Replay. I don't know what that was going on at that basketball game, but I can't wait to learn all about it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. We'll stay tuned for that. And we'll have more of the Night Beat right after this.